Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with Pastor Craig Roeders. And then we also have our very special guest with us today and it's Pastor Morgan right there with us. Morgan, um, he has been behind the scenes with stuff and he works here at the church with us. But Morgan, he's actually like a brother to you. He is like (laughs) a brother to me because he is my older brother. And today's going to be a little different than our other podcasts. Today we're going to talk um, really just, I feel like God's been speaking to me that we need to talk about even just how we need to give everything to God, our relationships, everything just die to ourselves and lay it at the feet of Jesus so that we can truly live for him. And we'll get into parts of my testimony. That's why we have my dad and Pastor Morgan, my brother, here as witnesses for me to make sure I'm being honest and transparent and open and not lying to you guys. And so, um, yeah, I just want to start off by Morgan. Do you want to, I think you should pray for us because you are new here. And so we're going to initiate you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, God, that we can um, just talk, that we can be real. Mm. And I know that it seems like this culture wants that so much because there's so much, um, there's just so much of the show. Mm. We're all living for, you know, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, looking at what people think of us. And, you know, I have so many things that I think of. And, you know, I was just thinking about how Oswald Chambers was saying, what is your obsession? And God our obsession a lot of times is ourselves or even our just our Christian experience. We just, our obsession is how we feel. And God, I pray that we can get away from the feelings mm. and that we could focus on the facts. Amen. So thank you for this time. Thank you that we could still see the testimony and see that, you know, at times feelings have been involved. But I thank you, Father, that ultimately your truth wins out. And I thank you for seeing that in Mariah's life. I pray that you just bless this time, that you give Mariah confidence to share, that you give her boldness, that you give her uh, that sincerity, and that you would show her, you know, if she, does, if she shouldn't share something, I pray that you would, would tell her not to. And if you want her to share even more, I pray, God, that she would, and that she'll just be led by your Holy Spirit, and that you would show us what to say, too. And I thank you for this time. We ask for anointing and a blessing upon it. I pray that the listeners, those who are going to watch this um, when it's live or even later on, that they will be touched by your Holy Spirit through this and to see how you are working in everyone's lives. And So we thank you for this time. We bless your holy name. It's in Jesus' my name we pray. And all God's people at home and on TV said, Amen. (laughs) Amen. 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 Well, that was a good prayer. I was crying, so... Um, well, the cool thing is that even Morgan and Pastor Craig being here, their birthday are both basically this week. So Mm. by the time you guys see this, you know, it's their birthday. So to the church, you can send them a gift. They accept money. (laughs) <laughs> really give gift to cards. God gift cards food, card, like, food cards like restaurant I something. take stimulus checks yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Morgan still doesn't know they don't have their he stimulus checks wants to go for checks, 12 so. bucks <laughs> but um, yeah so I'm just thankful for them in my la- life because <laughs> my life <laughs> my laugh they make me laugh they make me cry they make me they're just I truly like uh, I'm we can rough you up sometimes too <laughs> but it's good and so before i like get into my testimony uh, this is the point of calvary conversations galatians six fourteen. may i never boast in anything right because that's my temptation to be prideful religious and that's what we're going to talk about boasting in myself may I never boast in anything except for the cross of jesus christ Amen. and because of that cross my interests in the world have died and the world's interests in me have died and that is really real and raw for me at this moment today especially with everything going on in my life with just god just exposing darkness in my life and exposing i don't want to cry but um exposing be real exposing my flesh and exposing because i i was really confident coming in here today sharing my testimony because i've shared it at gospel rescue mission i've shared it one time in the church when we were in discipleship and it was all boasting about myself and it was all boasting about how, yeah, I was bad, but I really didn't think I was bad. And But God just made me better. Like my dad always jokes, more better. And now I'm just realizing like, wow, I am really, really 
wretched, a lot more sick and sinful than I even thought I was. And a reason and a verse for that too, um, or just even, I'll just start with a quote and someone that I really aspire to be like, like my dad always talks about, like the men and women of old. And I think that's really what I've been learning recently is like nowadays, what do we do? We follow the people of this world. We follow the Sadie Robertsons. We follow the Stephen Furtick's, the Craig Rochelle's, like all these famous people who think like, you know, I have all these followers, so I'm awesome. And I'm just getting to the point where I just have to admit that was my past. Like that was me thinking that those things will satisfy if like this podcast did well. And if we did well in that, like, then I'd be fulfilled. If I got married, like that's another thing my dad really has been encouraging me and spurring me with. And my brother, it's like, Raya, no man, no person will ever satisfy you. You need to be fully dependent and reliant on the Holy Spirit and God. Like he needs to be your ultimate lover. And I've said that to so many of you women even, like you who are watching this have probably seen me and been like, Raya, you always speak to us. Like Raya, just like I tell them, like just be satisfied in God. Like just... God's your lover, he's your friend, the Holy Spirit is all these things. And I'm being, I was being a hypocrite because that wasn't me. Like last year, I know I'm kind of ranting, but last year I went to Gospel Rescue Mission and I gave my testimony and it was right after um, in March when my dad almost died. And so it was even more like emotional for me because it was like after a breakup that I and like uh, it was after a relationship that my dad and my family saved me from not me not by my strength and that they protected me from and it was after like even me being like stubborn rebellious child and like causing problems between my family and like all these things so I just was realizing at the moment like I am a sinner and I'm not a good person there's nothing good in me whenever I thought I was good no I am sick I'm wretched I'm sinful there's nothing good in me I used to basically act like a Mormon. I would think that my good works and being holy and pure and having all these boundaries and never kissing a guy, never having sex, never doing drugs or alcohol made me a good person. And I was realizing, no, I'm just a Pharisee. I'm religious Pharisee. And that's hopefully my testimony is that I told, that's what I told to the women at Gospel Rescue Mission. I was so scared to talk to them because what? They truly are women that have gone through hard things like your testimony. I was telling them my my dad's testimony as if like that's my testimony because I don't have a testimony and I live basically my life through my dad because but I'm going to talk about that later but it is true like we learn from others mistakes that's why my dad and mom have been so honest and real with their past but what I'm realizing with all of this is that it's really the hardest and the grossest sin to deal with you might think it's like drugs sex alcohol you know even if all these addictions, but I'm telling you right now, it's religiosity Mm -hmm. that is sick and gross and destroys and sends people to hell. Like Mm -hmm. it says in Matthew 7, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I heal? Wasn't I a good person? Wasn't I pure? Wasn't I awesome? And he'll still be able to say, depart from me. Depart from me. I never knew you. Like my dad always says, gnoskos, like a man knows his wife, intimacy. And I'm going to be talking about that, how that was my whole life, even up till this day. Is I think until I get married, until I can one day have sex and experience that and all feelings, then I'll be satisfied. And God's like, nope, Mm -mm. you need to intimately, gnoskos, know me, love me, give everything to me. And um, I don't, I would rather you say the quote, but the man um, of Scotland, what did he say? Um, And this is what we want. But I think it was Knox. Yeah, it was Knox, John Knox. But he said, uh, "Give me Scotland, or I'll die." And God said to him, die, and I'll give you Scotland. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. is, It's like everyone wants to talk about death, and everyone wants to talk about yielding and surrender. And mm-hmm. like you were saying, don't, 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 you know, don't live for a guy. Mm-hmm. But it's like we can kind of lie, you know, when it says yeah. our hearts are desperate, we can deceitful. It's like it's funny, like we're kind of going through, we're kind of talking code here. But uh, Mariah was kind of interested in this guy, and we thought this guy was interested in her, and, and I pushed it. And it's like we realize how much we can be deceived to think, oh, this is God, this is God. And we can kind of push our agenda and put God's name on it. Mm-hmm. And I realize is that I was telling everyone right before this, until we really let go and let God, I have that little saying on my yeah. mirror, we're never going to really see the power of God. And, and I'm just going to say as an old time, almost 58, 
that the, what we're seeing is calling God really isn't God. Mm -hmm. When I, I was watched the, the movie, The Hiding Place, we were watching as a family, and when Corey mm -hmm. Timboom said, she said that, that uh, and this is in the 70s, mm -hmm. 1970s, she was saying, oh, you know, the church is so worldly. And, the, and I'm thinking, that I got saved in 1981. That was the glory days. Yeah. It's, now it's crazy. And so I'm saying, what would she say today, you know, if she's saying it was, it was messed up, you know, then back what 30 50 years ago what would she say you know yeah. right like 48 years ago you know it's like that's crazy and so we need to get back to as you used to say jokingly surrenderance i mean yeah. we need to surrender to god and quit you know because as whenever and i'm not trying to take your thunder but whenever we whenever i indict god i was telling the kids this before this whenever we indict god where are you god how can we not move in god how can we not do this and god is always when i've prayed that prayer god says well, you're not living like the great man or women of old. Mm. And it's always back on me. And you always see that's problem. Well, but it's surrender. It's not we have to mm -hmm. do anything. It's we have to let go yeah. and let God be the Lord. It's not like I have to do something for God. I have to surrender to the will of God. And we have to be honest, we don't like that. No. We don't like, we don't want to trust God. That's why we go on online dating. Mm. That's why we pursue guys or girls. Because we go, I got to help. We, we're kind of like, as I said today, right? We're kind of like the, uh, what's his name? Who's the guy? The founding father. We're like the Benjamin Franklin of Christianity. As he said, people will say a lot of, not you can tell a baby Christian will say, God helps those who help themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel according to a deist, yep. Benjamin Franklin. So God does not help those who help themselves. Yes, God, we surrender to God. He speaks to us and we need to do what he says. But he needs to lead, not us leading him. Yeah, amen. And Corey Timboon and this quote, it was cool because this is how I knew it was God. Just like every single time that I hear something from God and it's like confirmed with either then God telling me turn to this verse or turn here and I turn there. Or a lot of times it's through my dad and my dad is hearing from God. Because if I knew any man that hears the voice of God and loves God and like I have no fear in surrendering to like and obeying and being under the authority is my father. And that's why we want to also make it clear because we want to use this this um, episode also to explain the podcast and what it's all about and Calvary Conversations. Calvary Conversations is we like Galatians 614 that we don't want to boast in ourselves because right we're going to have people on here even that maybe we don't fully agree with like with certain things, but we want to hear their story and hopefully it's directing others to the cross of Jesus that even in the midst of our differences and stuff that we get back to the gospel, the simplicity that God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whoever, whoever, right? Not if you're a Calvinist, Arminius, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And through that Calvary conversations, like we want, that's why Calvary, the cross of Calvary for you don't know, for those who don't know, but and our conversations, everything we say to be on Jesus. And so Corey Ten Boone, it was cool because my dad had watched The Hiding Place. And I actually, when I first was going to the private school, <laughs> the school of religiosity, <laughs> um, I was Corey Ten Boom in fourth grade the first time. I had like the gray hair dressed up and everyone kind of made fun because everyone else was like in their pretty things. And Corey Ten Boom wasn't that good looking <laughs> she was an old spinster she never got she married an old bad kind of yeah the there. and she had a, like a hard voice and stuff because i always like want to be on here like welcome to calvary conversations like sadie <laughs> robertson and i'm like i just need to be real like i have a lower voice like i don't want to be fake like i want to be real i i want to be professional but i want to be real and um i think that it was cool because my dad had watched the hiding place like basically crying to me like maya like, this woman fully, like, just gave her life to the vision and the call that God gave her, specifically. We'll and, tell the story. And so, for her, she had this guy, it was like a family friend, mm -hmm. and... Um, she was around 18. Yeah, she was around 18 years old when, back then, people were, you know, getting married and stuff. And this guy, she, he came over to her house, and she was all excited, but... He had come over with his fiance, and so that crushed her. Right? She She's shot thinking, him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, she didn't shoot him, but but she it crushed her because she was like banking on that. 
like banking on a man. She thought probably he was going to come ask her to marry him. Yeah, that's mm. and what made me realize is that you see that with also Harriet Tubman. Same thing. Had a vision. A don't strong, tell me what God can't. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell me what God can't do. <laughs> but she came back for her husband. But then God was like, no, I need you to save your family. He was already like, married. And he already, mm-hmm. yeah, he had married, married another woman and all this stuff. So there, these women of God that were like, wow, I want to be like them. Because I think that I want to be like them. God's like, but they had to count the cost. They had to not go by their feelings and do what everyone else is doing, right? Everyone now in this day and age is getting married and young and, you know, getting married and then getting a divorce because that's not the... That's not the perfect person, and that's that wasn't their soulmate. So then they find someone else, and they don't believe in the biblical grounds of marriage. They think divorce is fine, which it's not biblical, um, unless, like, adultery or stuff. But these women, like, in myself included, I'm not trying to say, oh, you women, we think a man can save us. And that was when I went to Gospel Rescue Mission. My the, Even the title was, he, lowercase h, isn't your savior. He capital H, Jesus is, he is your savior. And I'm like, if I were to ever like write a book or something on that, it would be on that because it's so gross how over-sexualized these young girls are. And I was of thinking that's the happily ever after. Your happily ever after to be in love is to find a man. And it's just, we teach young girls this at a very, very young age. Like they're taught that playing their Barbies, they know. Like that they Kennedy marry Barbie, yeah. and then that's when they're happy. And so they're living their life trying to find that. And that's sadly like that's me. And I'm realizing now I'm like, wait, but God, you've given me a vision. Like you've opened this door in the midst of this coronavirus to be able for us to have this podcast mm-hmm. and me to be under submission. Cause I, you know, really before this, God I see, saw how it's been preparing me. So I kind of want to go backwards and then we'll end up you know, talking like, about the podcast. I want to say but, one thing about like Corey Timboom, though. Yeah. That you didn't finish. But Corey Timboom, so she said, so that guy came over with her fiance, mm. with his fiance. She was crushed. She said she was so upset. Mm. She ran up to her room and she said, God, I quit on you. You failed. No. She <laughs> said, God. I will give you everything, lock, mm-hmm. stock, and battle. Mm-hmm. And she says, and then it shows her later in a speech, she's 80 years old. That was 18, 80. She never got married. She says, I am an old spinster, but I've never been lonely, and I've never been unfulfilled, yet I've never been with a man. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I mean, now we hear that. Some of you girls are going, that's <laughs> sick and wrong. But my point is that how many know when you truly want to find the right person, you need to let go. But like Morgan was saying, we all have to, okay, I, I'll let go. <laughs> Thinking God's yeah. going to surprise me. Like, oh, I don't know what my gift is, even though you've peeked at it. It's like, you know, in Christmas, you know, people try to act surprised you've peeked at the package. But it's like, we need to just say, God, I trust you. Amen. I trust you. And, you know, some of you, you know, you're thinking, should I go on online dating? Should I do this? You need to let go and let God. Mm-hmm. Trust God. Because hear this, I was saying to you guys before this, before we started the, the podcast, is... Either God's real or he's not. Yep. Mm-hmm. If he's not, then let's. you better get online dating. Mm. And you better do things. You better work it. And you better sleep with your boyfriend. You better lock it down. But that's thinking like a pagan. What does Jesus say? Don't worry about food or clothing. Or he would say, a sp- he doesn't say that, but that's in there, spouse probably. But he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be out of you. And it's like, and think about Jesus. Says, I wish you either hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. We need to either get cold and say, you know what, God doesn't work. He's a sensationist. He doesn't do miracles today. Or we need to believe, you know, Hebrews 13, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and say, you know what, God, you're the same. So the issue is really we're not like the great men and women of old. We need to get back to that and believe God can provide a spouse in the right time. Amen. When I seek first you, when I live right, righteousness means live right, I'm yielded to your will. You will provide a spouse, and you're a testament of that, Morgan, yeah. right? We used to yeah. think you're going to be single because Morgan's not a real mm-hmm. pursuer of people; like he's kind of shyer. But what happened? Boom! Right when you kind of, I mean, you used to say that, right? You thought, oh, he'll never get married. Oh, I'm so feel so sorry. And then boom, he's married. You know, yeah. you used to say, I hope he gets married before me. I would think that's sad, but he did, and God did it, and you didn't have to strive for it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and, and same thing with Bill was. 
she was able to she just gave her heart to god because before that she was into just relationships and saying you know just putting her hope in guys or things like that but then once she did that it was quick and i'm not saying it's going to be quick for everybody but i think the reason why is because god knows and she surrendered it all a lot of times like you were just mentioning i was saying a lot of times we surrender so that we can get something yeah. Yeah. But that's not true surrenderance because we're doing it. it. Yeah, I said it is a word. I looked it up. What? It is? Yeah, it Sweet. is a word. I well, couldn't find it. I made it. Yeah, a I word. thought I looked it up one. <laughs> but true surrender is that way. Is mm-hmm. where yeah. you don't have strings attached. It's not like God, I'll surrender to you if you give me a husband. And we call that jailhouse no. religion. Yeah, mm-hmm. you give me out of here, I'll serve you. If you get, if you don't let me die this drug over, that's what I did before I gave my life to Christ. But when I finally gave my life to Christ and saw the power of God. Is what I always say. We all want resurrection power. Jesus said the same spirit, or Paul said the same spirit that lives, raised Christ from the dead lives in you. But how do you get resurrection power? You got to die. Mm-hmm. So we want to kind of die. But we got to fully die. And when I, when I saw the power of God in my life is when I said, God, my life is nothing. I'm not asking you for, I, I'm just saying, if you want my life, it's yours. There was no bartering. Mm-hmm. There was just, I surrender. And we got to get sick and tired. So sick of tired of being sick and tired that we surrender to God. And very few of us want to do that. And we wonder why is, we don't see the power of God. I've seen a lot of girls, you know, because there's been a lot of girls like coming after me. So, but mm-hmm. I've seen them. They they think that their life is going to start. Yeah. Once that their ministry is going to start yeah. once they have a husband. Yeah. But that's not the case. Normally, they find the husband and then they kind of coast, right? Yeah. You're working all this time to find a husband. But no, your ministry should start now. And your husband should encourage you to continue to minister. Like you were saying, Dad, you were saying how we're supposed to live, even as a married couple, we're supposed to live like we're single. single, In the sense that we're not putting we're not putting our spouse before the ministry, the calling before you know, we have to you know, there's a we have to make sure that our family life is good, our marriage and stuff, but they should not hinder us hinder us from seeking God, from pursuing our calling. But I'll say this, it's funny that our family, despite being at Push Ridge, I'll just say it, mm-hmm. and despite all the struggles of being PK kids, our family did pretty good. Now we have our one son is mm-hmm. is kind of, I mean, he's not falling away from God, but he's not really he walking like he should. And, but the what I say, and I'm asking you guys since you're here and you're yeah. my kids, but what I believe is because I've sought first the kingdom and um, put God first, and I wasn't around a lot. You said I wasn't around in the early days of the church. But God, I believe, covered me because I was honoring him. Amen. Mm-hmm. I wasn't building my kingdom. I wasn't going traveling because I had to be the biggest guy. God honors those who honor him, and that's the key. So, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I think is like, like think about this. If you, Jesus said if you try to gain your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll gain it. So think about it. everything's backwards in the king. What we think is normal in the world, he reverses it. So we think if I want my marriage to do well, I got to pour in everything to my wife, mm. everything to my kids, and then if I have time left, I'll seek God. God goes, no, seek first my kingdom, live right, and then as you do that, I'll bless your your marriage and I'll bless your kids. Yeah. We think, oh, I got to save all this money, get it this much money. I got to get a million dollars saved, then I can give to the Lord. The Lord says, no. Give me, give to me, honor me, tithe, and then I'll bless your finances. Yeah. What? No, no, no. Or what do we say? Like we said, I think you were quoting it, Morgan. We say, what is it? Was it Elijah or Elisha? I forget which one. But he says to the little widow who's starving in the famine, says, mm-hmm. go cook me, take your last thing. And they have only enough thing to eat, make a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour to make bread, and then we're going to die. Mm-hmm. He says, now you take that and you feed me. Mm-hmm. What? You <laughs> selfish pig. No, yeah. you feed me. What happened? They died a miserable death of starvation. No, I'm sorry, I'm in a cynical mood right now. But they said what? They did that, and then they're, they're, during the famine, the flour never ran out, mm-hmm. and the oil never ran out. That's how God works. Yep. It doesn't make sense. And that's what they say. Now, if it goes against the word, don't do it. Yeah. But if it doesn't make sense, you go, okay, so God, you're telling me to step out and walk on water? I heard mm-hmm. this guy once say, 
Why would God break his natural laws? Every miracle is breaking a natural law. Yeah. Yeah, flour natural doesn't law. just keep making flour. A, a bushel, a, a bag of flour doesn't keep growing without a violation mm -hmm. of a natural don't law. Don't you don't water. walk on water without violating a natural law. You don't ascend into heaven without mm -hmm. breaking some laws. Yeah. So God, anytime it's a miracle, to us, that's a breaking of natural logical. law. And that's that's yeah. what the Bible says. And our our wisdom, wisdom is yeah. foolishness. Yeah. Or his ways are not our ways. Yeah. So you almost have to think, what would I do? Reverse it. That's probably God, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I would I would hoard all my money, and that's going to grow it. God says, no, give, and I promise I will give back to you. Amen. Amen. I think and we better pass it on to Mariah again. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> but that's what it says in James four too. It's like you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. That's girls. Like you want what you don't have, you don't have a man, so you'll do whatever it takes. Are you saying girls Just, work, guys? Uh, yes, I've never seen and this. girls use their emotions and their feelings. Sex is a weapon, and sex is a weapon. They also um, are very catty and what? fight with other girls. Um, you are jealous of what others have. Isn't mm. that the truth? Girls mm. see. I'm not just saying this for girls. Guys too. Guys are like. What? Wait, people aren't like that on Facebook or Twitter, are they? With the followers, mm. they're not weird about when someone doesn't like them or stuff. Someone yeah. gets mad at and them. And then they yeah. compare themselves to like that girl looks this way, so I have to look this way. What the Bible say about I, comparison? That they're a fool. Those you compare yourself with others. Second Corinthians is says it's foolish. And yet we do it we all, all the, time. the time. And I'm 58 years old, going to be next week, mm. this Saturday. Saturday. But I still am, do that all the time. I compare myself to the past. I compare, oh, man, he's got 5,000 views in two minutes. I have, I'm have. lucky if I get you know, 100 views in 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. It says, but you can't get it. You're jealous of what oh. others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it, it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And that's the big key is that we don't believe that God is the same God, right? Like it was talks about in Hebrews, is it Hebrews 12? He is the same God yesterday, 13. 13. 13, same God yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change that. Mm -hmm. He truly cares about relationships. He cares about that, but ultimately he cares about your, he's a jealous God, right? How the world and Oprah is like, oh, God's a jealous God, but he's jealous for us because he knows he's best for us. He knows that we spent all our time striving and stressing to get married and have a wedding. And yet he's like, but you aren't planning your marriage ceremony or the honeymoon with me. So it's like we prepare and girls prepare all for this like fantasy and feelings. And that's how it was with my ex in the past. It was all materialistic. It was all about the wedding. It was all about the ring. It was all about the dress, all about the venue, all about the happy family and house and all the kids and having them homeschool and about hunting and all these wrong motives. And God was like, just really teaching me that you need to live for eternity. Like you need to store up your treasures in heaven where they will not fail that mm -hmm. they, and that his ways are better. And that if I like, how can but it's we easy expect, to lie to ourselves and yeah. say, our way, think our ways, our are, ways better. are better and they, because we think, Hey, but God, if you give me us. this person, yeah, he wants to make us happy, mm. but you don't see in the future. You don't see the divorce that's coming. Yeah. You don't see that God does. So, so well, yeah. I, I like what you said, Mo, you quoted, you, Stole it from me, so I'll stole it back <laughs> from me. But like the triangle, mm. that a true marriage is, we say, oh, just love each other. Again, like back to the, the law of God, how everything's opposite. We say, no, just focus. Morgan, you want Veli and you do good, just focus on each other, just focus on each other. But what does it say? As you focus, as Veli focuses on God, you focus on God, then you'll go close, closer to each other. The yeah. triangle is small because what? You can't love without God. Think, what does the Bible say? God is love. Not mm -hmm. love is God. God mm -hmm. is love. So if you want to be loving to your spouse, mm -hmm. right, as a wife or a husband, you've got to know God. Because if you don't know God, your love is conditional. Like you said, strings attached, yeah. false, right? What does the Bible say? Jesus said even sinners love those who love them, yep. mm -hmm. right? Because you know, Belly never made you angry or frustrated, and you've never mm -hmm. made her frustrated. But how do you? How does love, that God love that covers a multitude of sins, is what? It's a could God's a merciful love of God because why? Mm -hmm. We love others just as God has loved us. Mm -hmm. We show the same love he's shown us. We love him because of his love, but we love also others and are gracious because we realize how gracious he's been to us. So if we don't have that love, we're just doing it in our own strength, we're going to fill each other. And no man, like you were saying, the jealousy, mm -hmm. no man is going to fill you, fulfill you, girls. Mm -mm. Men, what do you guys say most of the time? Men are pigs, okay? Well, <laughs> how do you think a pig's going to fulfill you? Go grab a pig and a pig bang. <laughs> He's going to drive you crazy. He's going to be stinky. He doesn't care about you. That's the way men are. Women. Women are catty. And women just want what girls are sadistic, very materialistic, right? The rap song. We just, girls want stuff. 
Well, guess what? If you find your worth in Christ, then you're not going to need that other person. I always say to Mariah and I say to all of us, we shouldn't have to need our spouse. We should see our spouse as already frosting on an incredible cake of God. Mm -hmm. God is our life. Yep. Our spouse is frosting. It's just, wow, you're so good, God. But it isn't like, if, if my spouse wasn't around, I couldn't live. Really? Really? Uh, that's, that's really? I mean, when, why does it say, like you said, if you're married, live as if you're single. It's saying what I was saying to you, Morgan, earlier, offset. What that saying, guys, is you need to not just focus all on your family, focus all on your marriage. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on God. Mm -hmm. And then as you do that, as I said, God will bless your family. And a lot of you guys go, oh, I got to spend time with my family. I can't go to church. I got to go every other weekend. I'll go camping with my kid. Your kid's going to fall away. Your kid's going to be a flake because you've taught him to live for self, even good self. And self is bad, whether it's selfish, like fornication or living for his family. And what is Spurgeon says, a lot of great men and women, or sorry, a lot of men and women with great potential have put their family yeah. before the, no, the false nobility of their family before God. Isn't that funny? We used to say, you know, the old days was workaholic, sacrifice family, make money to bless your family. Now we're saying we've gone the other way. Family, 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 neglect church, neglect other things. And we need to say, no, seek first. Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom and live right. And then what? All these things, family, money, housing, whatever, jobs will be added unto us when we put God in the right place. Amen. Um, and then this is the key, the part of the James 4 Um that they fight, wage war to get it. Yet you don't have what you what you want because you don't ask God for it. So we don't pray because we don't think we don't have faith. Also, because it says without faith it's impossible to please God. And Abraham, his mm. faith talks about Genesis, and Just then I think in Galatians it was counted as righteousness. So I used to in my past think my righteousness is found in not doing this or not doing this or staying away from this. And it's like no, you need to have faith and trust. Right, right there we have a plaque that says. Trust in the Lord, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings, what we think and the world teaches us in social media. In all your ways, acknowledge him and say, God, I trust you. I free fall, right? Like just kind of like going back and just like um, trust fall. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Like he will direct you where you need to be instead of us mm -hmm. striving and pushing and saying, hey, because I have so many girls come to me like, hey, do you think I should like start this dating app or should I do this? And it's like, if I were to be based on the world standards, I would say, yeah, because do it, I don't do it know. Now. Yeah, I don't know what else to find. But when I trust God, God helps those who help himself. yeah, but when I trust God, it's like, it's not the easy thing to say, but let's pray and believe in faith that God will send him right where you are. There's countless stories of women in missionary things in small towns where there's basically only girls and them believing. I encourage girls to go to Set Apart Girl by Leslie Ludi, setapartgirl.com. And sh they have all these blogs and things, the stories of letting God write your love story and truly trusting like um, this one girl, she was 30 and over 30. 30? She's like, I want to have kids and <gasps> mm -hmm. I want to. And now my, my eggs are drying up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting old. We're scrambled. <laughs> and, but yeah, she trusts and God sent the perfect man for her that came to her. And my brother, I, I want you to even talk about that and then I'll you finish like the 20. verse. But, like, to talk about that, of how you even encouraged me and said, Mariah, like, mm. I really want you to just trust that a, a man of God, <laughs> yeah, and trust that a man of God yeah. can come to you. Well, the thing I was saying is it's it saddens me and makes me want to pray all the more because I see nowadays, like, men aren't stepping up. And even, I think part of it is that there's not a lot of men who love the Lord anymore. Like... I, I know that, you know, in the Bible it says, where are the people? And they, and they said there's 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. They're all in China. And so I know I know, <laughs> I know know that there's Probably. the those men out there. Yeah. But it, it can get discouraging when you just look at the world and look around you and be like, look at all these guys. Like, I couldn't imagine these people we with got my sister. Their, we got past yeah. metrosexual. Yeah. It looked like they're, I'm like, did gayness become a cool thing for yeah. a pastor? Yeah. yeah. But I, I just... Like, I want my sister to to reach out if she needs to, but I really pray that that guy pursues her. But sadly, the guys that I see pursue her are the ones who 
Or not just, that godly. Yeah, that, not that godly. They're just bold in the world. You know, they just they just want what sex or something. But I pray I don't want that for my sister. I want to her to be protected. So that's why I pray for that man in in God's timing to come to you, and for you to do your part too. But pray. I pray I'm it's so prayer. sad. I don't want you to have to pursue the guy. Yeah. That's not what you see in the Bible. Uh, and then just seeing. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just I was just gonna compliment you guys and just seeing how you guys treat me and the respect and like for women and the love There's like everything inside of me like how selfish am I thinking like I need this or I need a guy to fill me when I'm like God's given me Two guys in my life, right and nothing in weird and sexual ways because I don't need that like but truly in a godly way brothers and um, brothers in Christ sisters in Christ even and a father in Christ, like a well, father in real life, but yeah, he's mm. in Christ though. So that mm. like a dad to you. <laughs> he's mm. like a dad. Father's Day is coming up, and your birthday, and we're gonna oh, that's anniversary. So I was going like this on the camera to my because I was mm. thinking in my mind. I was like, <laughs> I was, and my dad's like, "What? You tell me, to hurry up!" And I was like, <laughs> I was thinking in my mind. By the time this airs, you are going to be fifty-eight yeah. because it's on Saturday, and this airs on Tuesday. So. I was thinking out loud, and I guess my, <laughs> my, my finger was twirling. <laughs> Hurry like up, Troy, <laughs> the Troy thing Hurry on your up. computer. Yeah, I was, like going, mm-hmm. I, was, I was thinking out loud. And, As you guys can motion. tell. You're like, this Dad, is, you're rambling. Come on. No, move. this is, this, um, is better than it could have been, because if it was the way I had planned and sharing my testimony and about me and what, like, this is real life. Like, this is, like, happening now. This, this is, is happening right now. Right now. This is this is what we need to talk about. This is the Holy Spirit, and we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So if you're like, oh, they're going back and forth, and it's not, like, that's how we want to live. We want to live led by the Holy Spirit, and we want you to get... Well, everyone like, on YouTube is ADD anyways. Yeah, so we want you to go yeah. away, act, like, taking something from it. <laughs> go away. <laughs> we want you to just go away. Click and like us and then go away. <laughs> no, get it. And send birthday gifts. <laughs> you want them yeah, to take away something. But, yeah. but we want to have fun, too, and make it, like, where it's not all... Because when I <laughs> first started this podcast, it was all about me. It was all about how I looked, and it still is, it still is my temptation, and I'm not saying it was... Because it still is, and now I still want to, but what? Now, now you're aware. aware. Yeah, now I'm aware of it because it, it's just easy but that's to that's our society. Yeah. That's, our, that's what I want to say before you interrupted me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's Father's I did, Day, I did, I did. No, but here's what I want to say. You quoted a really good verse of James. Yeah. You have not because you ask but not. You but ask when you wrong. ask, you ask the wrong motive. For so sure. here's what that's saying. Think about it. We all say we love King David. Oh, King David, King David, King David. If I had to pick one book, a lot of people, I'd pick the Psalms. It was so good. He wrestles with God. Mm-hmm. He talks about God. But think about what King David did. He did what I always say, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares and worries upon the Lord for your cares. He would take things. Instead of us, what do we go? Oh, I'm really freaked out. I got to go to YouTube. And what is a, yeah. some, past, some pastor probably doesn't even pray. What does he say about this? Or what does someone say? And they'll throw out verses. But how many of you know, verses without prayer is kind of just like knowledge without, without the Holy Spirit. It doesn't do anything. Pharisees yeah. knew the word, but they didn't know the God of the word. We need to pray to what? Where God will show us through prayer one is okay that motive is good pray that and have faith right like abram believing for his son or no that is not a motive that's a flesh you want this podcast mariah to be great so you can be great no that doesn't thrill me but when you say what does it say yeah i believe it's uh, john 15. you need to pray we need to pray all of us mm-hmm. you, those of you who are watching you need to pray yeah. it says in i believe it's john 15 8. It says, pray that you, when you bear fruit, it basically says, I'm paraphrasing, you bring the Father much glory. Mm. So that needs to be the key of our, key of our life. I want to be, bear fruit that I bring the Father much, much glory. glory. Not, I want much glory and say, oh yeah, Jesus. <laughs> no, I want to bear fruit that I bring the Father much glory. What did you say? My meat, what gives me life, what gives me substance, what gives me purpose is to do the will of the Father. That's what gave Jesus life. That's what give you life, and that's what gives me life when I do it. And I can humbly say, I live for the views. Mm-hmm. I live for the numbers. I live to compare. And then I wonder why I get frustrated. I wonder why my hair is white. I wonder why I feel so weighted down. Because I am what it says in First Second Corinthians, whatever it is, that, that he who compares himself with others is foolish. Mm-hmm. What we need to do is find out what God is saying about us what he says through his word and what he says, Craig, this, I'm not so hip on this. 
Mm -hmm. the praying for this is not really my will. Because what does God say? Think about this, guys. 1 John 5, 14 says, Whatever we ask according to his will, it shall be done. Mm -hmm. So think how much prayer we have that's unanswered. That's showing me, in my opinion, that most of my prayers are wrong motives, and it's for me myself and I and God is saying Craig I'm not trying to build you yourself and I I'm trying to kill you yourself and I so that I might live through you you need to die that I might live through mm -hmm. you you try to gain your life you lose it you lose your life you give your life what does that mean it doesn't mean you walk out on traffic and kill yourself it means I say God I'm Boy, done yourself. living for me mm -hmm. my life is yours and like you said Morgan when you do that boom you're going to see resurrection power to deliver you from drugs, mm -hmm. delivery from alcohol, delivery from pornography, delivery from that bad relationship Fornication. because you are walking in God and there's no constraints. There's no, if you do this, mm -hmm. if you save my boyfriend, I, no, nope. God, what do you want me to do? I want you to bring up your boyfriend. Okay. Yep. You know, and those, I'm, can I just say this? I'm going to say this. I'm going to boast in myself. Hear me. Boasting in myself, but I'm really not. I'm boasting mm -hmm. in God. When I got saved, I was dating a Catholic girl, and I thought she she never had sex with me, so she's got to be a good Christian. And I remember Dan Hicks sharing Christ, the guy led me to the Lord. Uh, we had his podcast, but then it got lost. But he said to me, he quoted Second Corinthians six fourteen, "Don't be unequally yoked." And he was, and I didn't know that sometimes Catholics can be religious and not really have a relationship with Christ. And then this girl was trying to get me to have sex with her, mm. and I told Dan this: I didn't have sex with her. But I said he, she wants me to. He goes, he told me that verse, and he goes, Craig, she's not pursuing God. She's You're unequally yoked. And I go, okay. And that goes, okay, okay, what? Like, like okay, you can just say, like, you're bad at me. Like, I'm going to date her. I don't care what you say, which most people say to us today, don't they? Mm -hmm. But I said, oh, okay. And I said, I'm, he goes, what do you mean? And I go, I'm going to call her up and break up with her right now because I the Bible says it. And okay. How much I long for people to have that heart today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's your interpretation. That's your, mm -hmm. really? What? Okay, done equally yoked. That means you're yoked together. One person's going for the world. One person's going for God. You're going to pull yeah. like tires that are towed out in a car, pulling like this. You're not, as the Bible says in, 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 in Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? You got to get yoked. And so what happens? But now we say, oh, that's your opinion. That's your thing. I really love them. I can save them. And what happens? And I'm going to tell you. Look at me. Divorce. Some of you women Divorce. out there will tell me, oh, I did that and I saved my boyfriend. No. For every good story, I can tell you nine bad stories yep. of how it didn't work out. How I can tell you some people right now getting divorced in our church because they married a non-Christian. Yeah. That's got to stop. Amen. And you can see it as I'm harsh. It's not because I'm harsh. It's because I'm Love sick them. and tired of the church being so shredded by the world. Because why? Mm -hmm. We're following the world system. We're following worldly practices. And we're wondering why we're bearing the fruit of the world. Mm -hmm. If we want to bear good fruit, then we need to do it God's way. Can you tell I'm a little passionate right now? Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of this. Because yeah. guess what, church? I'm sick. And if this church needs to get down to 10 people mm -hmm. to really love God, so be it. If this mm -hmm. podcast needs to be down to 10 people yeah. and have 52 bad likes. Yeah. If I'm offending you because of Jesus, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? It's when you finally get sick and tired and say, you know what? That old man is gray and fat. What does he know? But if you check it out and say, you know what? The Bible does say this. God is speaking. If you ask God, is this true? Is what this saying true? And you hear God say yes, then guess what? Obey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see the power of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And trust me, like, girls don't like to hear this because girls don't like to hear that they are filthy. Girls, Nobody likes to hear it. I know. But especially, especially girls, because there's something about them that they can say guys are pigs, guys do <laughs> pornography. Guys need pornography, help. Pornography, guys masturbate, guys do that. But they don't admit that weight. I do that too. I struggle with it. Like there's some like girl code that girls, you can't tell a girl that their breath smells or that they have a zit or that they have a booger in their nose, but like all day you can shred guys. It's like, I remember when we, um, this year when I had the women's awakening ministry and the awakening ministry was supposed to be like Ephesians five fourteen, like to awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, let Christ's light shine upon you. And that means that it will expose the darkness. What do people not like? What do they not like right now? That you are calling some people out, pointing them out, pointing their sin. But the Bible says also in James, confess your sins. So that's our hope today. And this is part of like with my transformation story. Confess your sins to one another so that you might be healed. And another, that's James 5, 16. But another thing that really is powerful is um, I think it's Revelation 12, 11. It says they overcame Satan 
by the blood of the lamb, right? The cross of Jesus, that's Calvary Conversations, the blood of the lamb in the word of their testimony. So like- They did not love their life so much as shrink from death. Yeah, they, they they've done their with life. their life. And that's the same thing with Galatians 6, 14. Our main verse and vision of Calvary Conversations is that the world doesn't like us anymore, right? The world's like, mm, you're not really conforming to us. So you're not accepting homosexuality and you don't think living with your boyfriend's fine. Like how judgmental are you? You talk about tithing. Yeah. And, mm. but yet the Bible says that if you are friends with the world, you are enemies with God. Like how intense is that? And then when you also read, when you read James um, four, when we were finishing it, it's like, but when you ask, you ask with wrong motives, right? With girls when, and guys, when you ask for something and it doesn't have to just be for someone who's a, um, a spouse because what if you are married you're asking then for a house what oh then the house is enough okay then you're asking for children okay that's enough then you're asking for your children to be married like there's always something like the it's yeah. never you're never satisfied so there's always something and satan always wants you to bring you to another thing same thing with pornography same thing with sexual sins same thing with like masturbation for people like they always need more 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 and uh, that was my past like you need more 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 you think to make you feel better and like satan is so subtle like you don't even think things are wrong like you don't even think it's like a really sin like like for my life i was just realizing with like my past and sin like i wasn't doing anything in the world standards that was wrong like Nothing I was doing, the world would say, like, they would say, you have no testimony, Mariah, because you did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But I knew that really why I didn't do anything wrong was because I had great parents who didn't even make it possible for me to look at pornography. They didn't, it wasn't accessible, I think you is the word. Phone like I didn't have a phone. <laughs> I didn't, I couldn't go to people's houses, sleepovers. We couldn't date. We didn't have a car. Like, all these things into the world. What is that? Legalism. Lettings. They are, sh you're sheltered. Like, your parents hate you, mm -hmm. but what? It's they're not my friends. They're my parents. Spoil, spare the rod. If you don't spank, we got spankings. That helped me because Morgan knows mm. I not was still struggle with being stubborn. Yeah. Like I have so many stories like of like me just even as a kid, like say sorry to Morgan, <laughs> say sorry to Morgan. And I'll be like, no. And I literally be like, they put me in a, like in the room, like put me in my room to, until I said sorry. And I would just hit my head on the door and scratch, and scratch the door until I would like, like it's like demonic almost. And then, mm. but it was just, it's, but that could be a great strength. Like the stubbornness in the sense that you stick and hold the truth. And I pray that that would be for God. Yeah. yeah. The strength to, for truth. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for joining our part one of our podcast. Please make sure to join us next week for our part two. Please make sure also to like subscribe and share this video. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.